Hello, everyone, and welcome to On Civil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. If you're enjoying our legal education content, please remember to subscribe. It helps the channel grow. For today's episode, we're doing number 52 in our ongoing series of the Capitol Riots. This is the story of Major Christopher Wanagillis, a 40-year-old active duty United States Marine Corps uh, Major serving at Quantico. In this story, Major Christopher Wanagillis decides that he wants to participate in all the frivolities of January 6th. We're going to learn a little bit about his activities during the 6th, and we're going to project how well this is likely to go for him going into the future. So let's get started with this. On January the 6th, at approximately 2.24 p.m., a security camera in the capital, positioned inside the east rotunda doors. Facing the doors, captures a group of individuals struggling to fight their way through those doors. The United States Capitol Police officers, standing guard outside the doors, can be seen through the window panes attempting to hold a large crowd of individuals at bay, while several individuals try to push through the officers or pull them out of the way. Three individuals who already enter the capital from elsewhere approach the doors from the inside and attempted to push the doors open to grant their fellow rioters entry. How nice. Uh, our, our teachers did teach us to share and they taught us to, you know, help others. And I, I'm pretty sure the United States Marine Corps, somewhere in their training, teaches the value of helping others. You know, not only make sure that you succeed in your goals, but also to make sure that others succeed in their goals, you know, to provide them that assistance. I'm sure that's somewhere in the training materials. Not quite sure this is what the United States Marine Corps had in mind, but this is how he decided to apply that lesson that day, right? So yeah, he wants to help others in their task of making sure they get in the building. This is probably good if you're helping people uh, climb the wall at the obstacle course. Probably not so good during the rioting, yeah. A United States Capitol Police officer in plain clothes rushed the entrance and attempt to push away individuals gathered inside the doors and attempt to help them keep the remaining crowd outstride. As this struggle ensued, the officers gradually lost ground, and a group of individuals, uh, and a crowd of individuals managed to push their door through the doors open wider and wider. Okay, first of all, I just have to comment on a personal level that I, I, I like the way this is being written. Something about the way this particular person is writing this is, is pleasing to me. It's, it's a lot of imagery, and I like imagery in writing. You can go over the top on it, but this is pleasing me. You know, he, he, he's really setting the scene for us, talking about how the camera is facing the door and the individuals there standing guard and the people pushing and pulling. It's very visceral. And he talks about the struggle and the officers losing ground. So whoever this is at the FBI, I just want you to know that I like your writing style. That's an uncivil law quote. I just want you to know this is working for me. I really do appreciate the additional imagery. I feel like I'm there. I feel like I'm in the moment. Let's let's feel a little bit more about it. This is this is going great. As the struggle ensued, the officers gradually lost ground and a crowd of individuals managed to pull the doors open wider and wider. You know, this feels like this could be really a dramatic interpretation. I might work on this as a DI. And maybe I'll do it during open mic night or something. That could be fun. At approximately 2.25 p.m., the first individual pushed himself through the East Rotunda doors and into the Capitol. The subject was wearing a dark jacket with bright green zippers, a military green backpack, and tan gloves. He has short, dark hair, which was trimmed to the skin, along the edges of the hairline. Images of this sub subject would subsequently be posted to the FBI website, Capital Violence page, and given the designation of be on the lookout, 241 AFO, here and after 241 AFO. And here we have the screenshot of the camera facing the doors with the individual of our moment, circled there in red, very exciting, very in interesting. The screenshot shows events captured on January 6 at approximately 2.25 as 2.41 AFO enters the capital through the rotunda doors. 2.41 AFO is circled in red. After 2.41 AFO made its way through the doors, other individuals followed one by one, 
each having to fight and push their way past the officers who were still attempting to physically block the entrance. 241 AFO briefly walked out of view of the security cameras and then returned to the doorway from inside the building. He positioned himself in the corner of the doorway and seemed to be using his body to help keep the door partially open and reach for individuals pushing their way through to help pull them inside. So we have a screenshot of our of our protagonist of this particular tale, not a positive protagonist, but he's the one driving the story forward, right? So we have the we have our 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 anti-hero protagonist here circled in red. A screenshot. We got this wonderful visual of him helping. Or or to put it another way, uh to put it another way, and I just want you to know I apologize for nothing. And this is happening now. So, you know, brace yourself for it. This is Major Wanna Grouse to ground control. I'm helping people through the door of the U.S. Capitol, and I'm riding in a most peculiar way. And the stars and stripes I swore loyalty to look very different today. For here I'm sitting in a jail cell. Far away from Quantico, the U.S. government is blue, and there's nothing I can do. As the struggle continued, several U.S. Capitol Police officers repositioned themselves from the outside the doorway to inside and continued to try to stop the stream of individuals from entering the building. Officer A.W. moved himself between. 241 AFO and the crowd outside. Officer AW tried to pull one of the doors shut as 241 AFO continued to try to push further open. Officer AW was interviewed by the AFI FBI on January the 26th, 2021, and shown a screenshot from the security footage that depicted him next to 241 AFO in this doorway. Officer AW recalled. 241 AFO being next to him during the struggle struggle, and order him to get out of the doorway. When 241 AFO did not comply, Officer A.W. recalled trying to push him out of the way and 241 AFO pushing him back in an effort to maintain a position to the open door. This struggle between 241 AFO and Officer A.W. can be seen in the security footage captured at approximately 2.27 p.m. So again, we have our wonderful friend here with his army backpack on, apparently in a tussle with the U.S. Capitol Police, where we can see the word police clearly marked on him. And we can see him and uh, see him and our friend here struggling for the doorway. And tr he's trying to help people in and the U.S. Capitol people are trying to prevent him. It's very, very sad. Very, very sad. But yeah, that's that's what's happening there, right? Parts of this scene were also captured by a videographer working for RMG News, who was among the individuals already inside the Capitol. Two screenshots of 241 AFO were captured from RMG News video and posted to the FBI Capitol Violence website. A third screenshot of 241 AFO was taken from video posted to YouTube by Freedom News TV, which captured 241 AFO walking through the interior of the Capitol after abandoning the struggle at the East Rotunda doors. Well, Apparently, apparently this Marine, apparently this Marine does give up. He has given up the charge. He has surrendered his position. He has surrendered his position and retreated. So that's another thing. That, so, so what is worse here? That's, that's a good question for the United States Marine Corps. What is worse? Is it worse that the United States Marine Corps major decided to participate in these events in the first place? Or is it worse that once having decided to participate, he decided after a minor struggle with the Capitol Police to retreat from his position and no longer fight for the cause? What is worse, man? Yeah, that's what the Marine Corps is going to have to decide, man. <laughs> All right. So anyways, he gave up the struggle. Very, very sad. And here we got some more shots of him. With his fatigue, with his clothing and his his attire, he's got some boots on and some pants and some jacket and backpack, and he's got very very closely cropped hair. Hmm. Yeah. Photographs posted to the Capitol Police by the Capitol Police to the FBI. Yeah. 
On March the 16th of 2021, a member of the public, here and after witness number one, saw three photos of 241 AFO on the internet and reported to the FBI that we recognize this as Christopher J. Warner Gillis, who witness one believes is an active duty Marine officer. He is, at least, you know, as of the moment, yes. How's that once a Marine, always Marine thing working out right now? That's also what I want to know right now now. Witness one works with Warner. <laughs> uh, witness one worked with Warner Grills for approximately six months in 2019 and would see him in close proximity once a month while they worked together. <sighs> witness one expressed high confidence that is Warner Grills. Yeah, I know that guy. We worked together. <laughs> Saw him once a week for six months. As part of our move. Uh, investigators determined that Warner Grillis is an active duty Marine officer who is stationed at Quantico since the summer of 2020. That had to be an interesting discussion from the FBI. You know, the, the FBI does train at Quantico. In addition to the Marine, it's not just a Marine Corps base. Right? It's not just a Marine Corps base, although it's certainly that. The FBI also has facilities at Quantico. I wonder if they sent someone from DC or if like they just sent someone from the from next door. Someone just walked out of their office, walked over to Warner Gar Gris, maybe took a look at him. Maybe did this thing. Yeah. Same guy. Maybe they caught Warner Gillis in in the uh, in the officer's mess or something. A little chat chat. Maybe at the local dive bar. I don't know. I I want I have so many questions about the particulars of this story. I want to know more details. I want to know exactly how this went down. It it excruciating minute by minute detail. I crave it. I need to know. Investigators. <laughs> On March the 17th, 2020, I, along with another FBI agent, went to Warner Gross's military command and interviewed one of his coworkers. That must have been a really interesting discussion. That's got to be fun. That's got to be fun. You get a knock on the door. You get a knock on the door. You're the commanding officer. You get a knock on the door, and it's the FBI. Maybe you know them because, again, as I mentioned, the FBI has the facilities there. So maybe you know them. And you're like, hey, Bill, how's it going? What brings you here today? Well, actually, it's business today. I have I have some business for you. Oh, really? What's that concerning? Yeah, do you happen to know this guy? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, he's he's under my command. Yeah, about about that. I'm going to need you to, you know, uh, transfer him to my custody. Why? Why would that be? Well, let me tell you a story. That's got to be a fun discussion. Let me tell you right now. Witness two, who is one of his coworkers, worked with Warner Girls for approximately nine months and tends to see him in close proximity several times a week. Witness two was shown these photographs and a brief portion of the video and was asked, do you recognize this individual? Yeah, it's that guy. It's the major Warner Girls guy. That's got to be a fun discussion right there, man. For the above reasons, the FBI believes that our individual friend here, who, of course, is innocent till proven guilty, may have violated the following crimes. Well, he may have forcibly assaulted or interfered with a person while engaged in the official duties. We did see that tussle. So, yeah. It, he may have committed the crime of obstructing, impeding, or interfering with a law enforcement individual engaged in, in official duties. Yeah. May have committed the offense of obstructing, interfering, and impeding an official proceeding before Congress, I don't know how much worse it gets. This is pretty bad. It's like, yeah, as, what what exactly did you do here? Well, I rioted in the Capitol. What was the Capitol doing at the time? Well, there was an official proceeding pursuant to the Constitution to determine who the next commander-in-chief was going to be, and I was interfering with that process 
No, that that court martial should go super duper well. Super well. Mm -hmm. Also, the vice president of the United States was present at the time. And uh, the the would be president would be vice president elect was also president at the time. You know, yeah, good good times. <sighs> Makes it a crime to knowingly impede or disrupt the orderly conduct of business of the government's business. Makes it a crime. <laughs> to utter loud and threatening or abusive language, and the FBI believes all this is true, and very, very sadly, because it seems to be a more recent trend. In the early days of the Capitol riots, they set, they kept the names there. They kept the names of the FBI people there. But very, very sadly, the FBI's name is redacted here, which is very disappointing, because I'd very much like to send this FBI official something in the mail, and I need to know where to send it. Do I send it to FBI headquarters? Do I send it to Quantico? Maybe that'd be good. I'll send it to Quantico address to FBI agent, to FBI special agent involved in the arrest of. Here's a card from Uncivil Law. I just want you to know. I like your writing style. So yeah, major, 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 major Warner Gorillas over here of Marine Corps. It's 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 not going to go well. It's not going to go well. The U.S. government has some questions, and they have some objections. And uh, the U.S. military also probably has some questions. And they'd like to have a little chat. A chat. They'd like to remind you of various provisions of the United States Code of Military Justice. Maybe you didn't, maybe you forgot. We'd like to remind you about them. Here are some provisions that might apply. Pretty sure you didn't have orders to, you know, overthrow the Congress of the United States. You know, and interfere with the lawful transfer of power to a new commander in chief. That kind of seems like the thing that might raise some questions at a potential court martial. It's about this point right now that I I I don't know if court martials are ever open to the public. I I really kind of hope that they are, because I might go to this one. I assume that that's not normally a thing that they allow. Maybe if I ask really nicely and I guess press credentials or something. I don't know. How does that work? Maybe I'll find out. Maybe I'll call the Marine Corps Public Affairs Office and say, hey, Marine Corps Public Affairs Office, can I get credentials to cover a uh, court martial that's upcoming? Really want to see this one. Can I can I see it so we can make sure that the because the civilian the civilians are in control of the military, right? So as a civilian, can I can I monitor this one? I have some, I have some curiosity. Might see if I can get permission to that one. That might be fun. But until that happens, my friends, that is all for now. If you're enjoying this legal education content, please remember to like the video. If you happen to know any, if you happen to know anyone at JAG, in the Marine Corps, please let them know I'm interested in attending. I this you know, I have twenty thousand people in this in this network. You know, I have 20,000 subscribers. Surely someone out there is a JAG or former JAG of the Marine Corps. Can I get some sort of permission here to attend this court martial? Because this sounds like way too much fun for me. I know it's far away in the distant future, but still. Can I get into that thing? Is that possible? That would be hilarious. So someone talk to someone and see if I can get permission from JAG or whoever that I need permission from. Do that. If you're not already subscribed, why not? You should be subscribed. And for 99 cents, you can support the channel financially. It's true. You can help support us and so we can get more quality educational content. And you can help support my travel costs for said court martial, should that ever occur. I'm probably I'm gonna have to travel somewhere and get a hotel. I'll totally do it. It's gonna be great. So all that good stuff. Until later, my friends, I hope all is well. Cheers and goodbye.